Okay, hello YouTube. This is the third part of the um, I, um, iPhone 3G speed hacks videos, which I said I'd put up there. Um, the reason it's taken me so long to get it is because, um, as you may be able to tell by the amount of free RAM I've got on this, this is now a 3GS. Um, I sold my iPhone 3G, which is why it's taken me a while to get this one out. Um, I've been in the process of removing everything and getting it set up for the buyer of it, so unfortunately I had to get rid of ScreenFlow and I didn't want to do the video without being able to demo it live for you. So, um, you know, with that got passed, I'm going to be able to show you how to do these things, but obviously I'm not going to apply them myself because this is a 3GS, I don't need to, but if you're on a 3G, go for it. All right, the first step is one I mentioned in a post on an XLIs forum, which I'll, I'll link to the post in the comments, sorry, in the information, um, on the dangerous way to unlock your device and I am going to go through it but once again as always I recommend you don't do it okay I'm just get that out of the way All right, you can use SSH or anything I prefer iPhone Explorer and I want you to navigate to that directory there okay just there so I'm going to do it now okay so open the root of the phone okay then system library system configuration which is here power management bundle okay now you will find this file here oh, oops. okay this one and this is the file where the um, overclocking and underclocking is always done and basically um, there's what I consider to be an over the top dangerous way of doing it, but a lot of people say it actually gets the best performance increase. So I am going to go through it in the interest of fairness. And that's basically to stop this plist file from loading. In order to do that, what you do is you simply rename it and you get rid of that part. Okay? Just that's all you do. Then you save it and reboot your device. Now, I'm not going to do it. Um, I'm just going to write it back in. Um, but that's what you do and unfortunately it's a very very dangerous thing to do but if you're willing to try it that's up to you and you know it's not up to me to tell you not to but apparently that completely gets rid of any Apple underclock so you get the full performance out of your processor but I've heard things of heat issues and things with it so you know I've warned you okay the second one which is something I approve of much more can be done on the device, literally, no jailbreak even required for this one. Just go into your settings, general, and then you go to spotlight search, which is just there. And as you can see, I've got these all checked on. But on a 3G, particularly if you don't use them, these um, do something called indexing, which creates A space and B requires memory. Um, so, what you can do on your 3G. Simply click them, turn them off, and what you'll find, I'll just turn all these off just to demo because I can turn them straight back on again, is now when you search here, all it will search is online. So I'll search for, I, I happen to know I've got some called Alex on my phone, but if I search for it, you'll see it doesn't come up as it normally would. So that's that one. Alright, now, um, as I said in the um, post on XLIs, I would quickly have a talk about the dangers of doing these things. Right, well, the first thing I want to talk to you about is virtual memory. Okay? And what that does is it takes a chunk of your hard drive space, you know, usually you've got an 8 or 16 gig model of the 3G, and it turns that hard drive space into RAM. Usually they take between um, 50 and 80 meg, depending on which hacks you go for. Um, RAM and hard drive space are very different things. RAM is designed to be abused, basically. You can read and write it extremely quickly. Um, it's designed to um, open things very fast and have things deleted from it very fast, whereas your hard drive is not. It's designed to be used every now and again for that sort of thing. So taking that and turning it into RAM can be dangerous. Now, I'm not going to be ridiculous and tell you it'll kill your device because, in all honesty, it probably won't. And, to be honest, it would probably take maybe even five years before you start to see memory loss problems, but I'm being 
fair in telling you that it can cause problems and that if you're worried particularly about sensitive data on your phone and you don't want to risk losing it, I suggest you stay away from virtual memory. Okay? Now I'm going to talk about overclocking. What that actually does is takes the processor, which Apple um, clock to 412 megahertz, when the actual processor runs at 620. Now you may think, why is this? And the answer is twofold. It's A, battery life, and B, um, heat. If you run the processor at full speed, you will use more battery. There's no two ways about it, and unfortunately there's no way around that. It's also got a potential to put out more heat, as there's obviously no fan in the device. It's purely um, just cooled as is. You know, it gets, If it gets hot, it gets hot. There's nothing you can do about that. So, overclocking, whereas it isn't necessarily dangerous in the same way as virtual memory, which can, over time, almost definitely kill your device, overclocking is more you're shortening your life expectancy, because phones don't last forever, and if you lash it at full power, you'll kill it quicker. So that's probably a fair thing to say about that. And Once again, these things are only last resorts if your 3G is going particularly slow, and, well, for me, iOS 4 did that, so I had no no option other than to do these. So this is going to be it for these videos. I hope you found them interesting or a little bit useful, you know. But, well... All I can say is be careful when you do these things, and I hope they help, and if so, comment, subscribe, do whatever it is you want to do, I don't mind. Um, but I hope they helped, and I'll speak to you another time.